Hello, it's Amy and Amy's Free Motion Quilting Adventures again. And I'm working on a series of grid-based designs. This particular design uh, does not actually stitch on the grid. The grid was done with a stencil and a fabric marking pen. And all I'm doing is using the corners of the design to keep my markings right. And I'm just going side to side. I'm only going back down these lines in a little bit to complete the design and then going across them. And I'll stop right there at an intersection and readjust my hands. Once I get halfway down the square, I try to get back down to that corner. And then I'm just going to come out here. This is a partial square where I'm running into the end of my design. And now I'm going to start coming back up. I'm going to rotate my quilt a little bit because I don't like pulling the quilt towards myself on these things. Alright. So you can see where I've already stitched. And I'm just doing the opposite side of that line. Coming out maybe an eighth of an inch from the end. It's probably not even an eighth of an inch from the edge of the line. I would say the arches of my spaces are about an eighth of an inch. Now this is a pretty tiny scale. And right here I had already done two sides in the same way. I, got, I stopped and went the wrong way when I started. So I'm just going to come over here. And I'm going to have to down this way a little bit. It's a partial line, so I've got to start not at the corner. When you first start doing this this uh, design, you'll really feel like it's um, not as even as you want. But with a little practice, it gets um, much better. And also, just with about any free motion design, when you have stopped quilting and you set your piece out away from you, maybe on your design wall or lay it out on a bed or a table where you've got a little bit more distance away from it, and you'll find that it looks much better. Coming back up here. When I stop, I always stop right at an intersection. It's just a good place to stop. You know, I have needle down function on my machine, so every time I stop, my needle stays down. That helps keep um, the quilt from slipping while I'm not using it using the machine, I should say, um, when I'm repositioning my hands, that kind of thing. And I'm going to just go ahead and, let's see, I want to finish out this row and then start going across the design so that you can see that. was getting away from me and so I just stopped and pulled it back. You can mark this grid whatever size you want and work from that. You can use um, square piecing as your grid instead of having to mark out lines. Um, if you've got something with multiple small squares like a trip around the world kind of quilt or 16 patch. There. I'm going to go ahead and start going across, even though I don't have all my lines done. I want you to be able to see what it looks like when it's been stitched across.
again, we are, um, we, me, I, actually I and my readers, my readers and I, are doing a series this month on grid-based designs. And so that's what um, this video is about. Um, if you haven't come to the blog, I invite you to check it out. It's Amy's Free Motion Quilting Adventures. FreeMotionQuiltingAdventures.blogspot.com this direction. I'll do a different design. So I don't want to go off and keep going too far. Let's see. I think you get an idea of what it looks like here. Again, these are uh, purple lines will um, fade, and I'll get a good picture of these after the lines have gone out and put it on the blog so you can see what these designs look like without the purple marks involved. Anyway, I thank you for watching, and uh, enjoy. Bye-bye.